Hello and welcome back to another Future Doghouse production. Let's talk about tennis, specifically Maria Sharapova and Maldonium. Maria Sharapova was found with Maldonium in her system and it's a banned substance as of January 1st, 2016. Now she's in trouble. Let's talk about Maldonium. No, it's a, it's not a drug that we find in America. Well, you're a medical student. Well, it's not FDA approved. Well, you're a medical student. Okay, okay, let's talk about Maldonium, shall we? Maldonium, also known as Mildronate. It's an anti-ischemia drug. What's anti-ischemia? Okay, well, uh, ischemia is when blood can't go to the tissue or organs. So, usually, uh, this drug increases blood flow or allows blood to flow preventing ischemia, preventing the blood from not going to tissues and organs, allowing blood to go to tissues and organs. Okay, good. Structural analog for gamma butyrobetaine. So this drug is a structural analog for gamma butyrobetaine or betaine. Okay, it's basically the same chemical as this, as this, this drug's chemical is the same chemical as this chemical, which is found naturally in the body. And what's this chemical? It's a precursor of carnitin. What's carnitin? Carnitin is carne, meat. It's found abundantly in meat or abundantly in muscles, okay? And it's naturally produced in the body. Okay, let's talk about that. Carnitin biosynthesis. You obtain this chemical, TML, from vegetables. From this chemical with an enzyme creates this chemical. From this chemical with an enzyme creates this chemical. From this chemical with an enzyme creates gamma butyrobetaine. Yes, which is the precursor of carnitin through this enzyme. Okay, now I'm gonna give myself a lot of meldonium. I'm gonna give myself a bunch of extra gamma butyrobetaine. What does that do to my body? Well, it inhibits gamma butyrobetaine dioxygenase, okay? It inhibits but gamma butyrobetaine dioxygenase. What does that do? Well, it inhibits carnitin synthesis, okay? You prevent this, you prevent this formation. Aha, and when you inhibit carnitin, what does that do? That inhibits fatty acid oxidation. Okay, interesting. Tell me more about carnitin. Okay, let's talk about the function of carnitin. Abundant in muscles, and we have in our bodies free fatty acids or long chain acyl coal. Okay? And this free fatty acids cannot penetrate the inner mitochondria membrane. And the mitochondria is where we have fatty acid oxidation, oxidation, beta oxidation, or fatty acid oxidation. And beta oxidation is basically the catabolism of fats. And so the carnitin plays a role because carnitin, specifically carnitin palmitoyl transferase 1, converts free fatty acids to acyl carnitin, acyl carnitin, and this acyl carnitin form, form is, a, is able to pass through the inner mitochondria membrane, allowing the uh, fatty, free fatty acids to go into the mitochondria membrane in this form to uh, be oxidized by beta oxidation and the catabolism of this free fatty acid. Okay, now that's a little bit more clear, but how does this benefit people? How is this medically useful? Okay, well, by inhibiting this formation, okay, you force the body metabolically um, to, to, okay, medically, by inhibiting this, you treat angina, chest pain, and atherosclerosis. Now, the reason why you treat atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis is because too much carnitin in the body has been linked to atherosclerosis, okay? So if you inhibit carnitin production, you, prevent, you reduce the formation of atherosclerosis. And by reducing atherosclerosis, you reduce uh, angina or chest pain, uh, you treat myocardial infarction because myocardial infarction is usually caused by atherosclerosis and again arrhythmias, you know, you, by treating atherosclerosis you remove all these things. And they also found out in patients with stable angina, stable chest pain, angina pectoris, chest pain, stable angina pectoris, which means that this patient 
has chest pain, but usually it's manageable. Okay, they, they know when it happens, usually upon exertion, they have this stable angina, this stable chest pain. And they found in patients with stable angina that it increased their exercise tolerance. Okay, it made them stronger, you know, somehow, uh, for some reason. So that's beneficial for patients with chest pain. Why is it banned? Okay, the reason why it's banned is because this drug also has CNS qualities, central nervous system uh, qualities. For example, it improves the central nervous system by improving the patient's mood, giving the patient a high. Uh, it uh, decreases motor dysfunction, so patients with motor dysfunction um, this lessen that, lessen the dysfunction of the motor, of the motor system. And asthenia, dizziness, and nausea was less pronounced. Asthenia is weakness of the muscle, so it made them stronger, okay? That's good for patients with CNS disability, central nervous system disability. And thus, the uh, World Athletic Association uh, has banned this drug because they claim, they, they say that this drug is a metabolic modulator, like insulin. And it improves the rehabilitation of patients, of athletes, after, after exercise. And it protects athletes or patients against stress. So it's a bit of an enhancing drug, okay? And so that's, that's meldonium for you. And, you know, whether or not meldonium should be banned or not, no, that's up to you. Uh, my job is here is to tell you all about meldonium and Maria Sharapova. Thank you and have a nice day.